Welcome to Worship, Lord of Life. Welcome to Midweek Worship Unplugged on January 20th, and I'm so glad to be able to spend this evening with you. As we gather for worship today, is Inauguration Day, um, so a lot going on in this world, but I hope that we can carve out this time together, a time to find our breath, which is central to who we are and how God has made us to be, and then we might be able to trust in this God, that this God is holding us here in this moment. So as I set up my space for worship, I like to light a candle. It helps center me and I love the smell. And it reminds me of the light of Christ and that this light is always with me. Now I wonder as you continue worshiping at home, what are you doing to help set up your spaces? Spaces that remind you of who God is and how God shows up. Ways to transform your comfy couches um, or your dining room tables into places where we um, set aside time to meet God. I'd love to be able to see what each and every one of you do, um, whether it's the whole shebang, something fancy or something as simple as just sitting quietly um, and an internal shift rather than an external shift. So as we settle into this worship space, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes as you're comfortable or as is possible, wherever you might be tuning in from. And as you close your eyes, I'll ask you to breathe in through your nose and sigh it out. And breathe in and breathe out. It's not often that we have moments of silence or quiet in our lives. And so cherish it. Cherish those moments and carve them out if you can. So as we continue in worship, I'm going to encourage you to keep breathing for many reasons. It's helpful to keep breathing. Now I know you're with me, but it's also a helpful way to recenter if you find your mind wandering or if you find your anxiety um, welling up, pushing up. A simple breath in and out can help reset the whole body. So please join me, friends, in our centering litany. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your people here. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness. By the light of your Christ, may your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, friends, we get to hear the word of God this evening. <sighs> Again, breathe in and out as we welcome this next section of our worship together. You are exalted, Lord Most High, Christ be exalted in this humble place. And our scripture tonight comes from Mark, the, four, the first chapter, verses 14 through 20. So after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. 
but now in these days he has spoken to us by his son. This is a beautiful passage for us to be reflecting on tonight. I love the imagery of <laughs> just dropping everything and going to follow Christ. And I think I love it in an abstract way that lifts up other people who would do that and recognizing that's something that would be really, really hard for me to do myself. Mark's gospel is uh, notorious for using the word immediately constantly. And Mark's gospel has a sense of urgency and it's also the most straightforward gospel. If you're looking for a gospel to get tuned in to the whole story, this one is a good one because it's kind of like the cliff notes. It's the central stuff. It's this happened and then that happened and then this happened and it was immediately after one after the other. And my goodness, if that doesn't resonate with the kind of lives we're living right now. There's a sense of urgency and immediacy in, in everything that we do. It feels like we're going from one crisis to the next crisis and there's not even a chance to take a breath or to see what might be happening next. And a lot of us I've heard from our congregants feel like they're in a place of just fog. There's coming back from Christmas and getting back into the swing of things was way harder than most people thought. And then to be hit with what happened at the Capitol on the 6th and to then still be looking ahead to the fact that there's uncertainty in our future when it comes to our political reality. There's uncertainty when it comes to the pandemic. There's uncertainty every single place we look and we're exhausted. And then we have the story that we hear tonight. And the story brings us such clarity. It brings such a sense of um, order and direction, things that we're all searching for. It would be amazing for someone, Jesus, to come up to one of us and say, drop what you're doing, this is what's next. To just know that there is a next step that made sense. The certainty that Simon and Andrew must have had to leave everything and turn towards the way Christ was leading. I wonder what was going on in their hearts or in their minds? Was it as simple as a snap decision? Was it something in Jesus's voice? Were they unhappy as fishermen? Were they looking for something else or was it God? Was it the Holy Spirit moving through them? I know that it takes a lot of courage. I know it's not what they planned for their lives. They couldn't have anticipated it. And I wonder if they ever regretted it, if they ever looked back and wondered why they made that decision, or if it was just smooth sailing from that point for forward. All of us are faced with so many decisions every single day, and a lot of them feel like they have such heavy weight to them. I wonder how many of us feel like we're not measuring up. in our personal lives or in our faith lives, I wonder how many of us wonder if we would be able to even hear Jesus's voice in the midst of all the chaos and sounds and asks and directions that are coming towards us every single day. Well, many of you know that I took three months off, um, October to the end of December, early January, uh, to deal with some health stuff that was going on. Um, in those three months, I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about God and I learned the risk and the terror of laying down everything that I thought defined me to pick up what God's call was for me at that time. It was terrifying. Every single day, I didn't have a plan which maybe to some of you sounds amazing, but to me was the worst thing. <laughs> I like plans. I like to know what's going to happen every day. I like routine. But every single day I woke up with the question, what would bring me joy? And in doing that, I began to hear a voice that I haven't heard in a long time. And I realized it was my own voice that I hadn't carved out time to even know what I wanted, needed in any sense of the word. 
And the more I listened to this voice and, and knew uh, how to hear it, how to tune out the other sounds and voices, the more I realized that this voice wasn't just my voice, but it was the divine spirit within me. This voice was leading me towards health. It was leading me towards real rest. It was leading me towards creativity in ways I'd never experienced before. I learned that our God is faithful in really strange ways. Our God is there in unexpected moments. Our God is there speaking to us all the time and I couldn't hear it. I was immersed in my own pain. I was distracted by tasks I needed to get done. I felt like emails were way more important than listening to the voice inside of me calling towards rest and calling towards a, a different sense of health. Learning to hear that voice, I wonder how many of us feel like we've lost that for ourselves. I wonder how many of us would be able to hear that. There's so much going on in our world. Would we even hear Jesus's invitation to come and follow? And if we heard it, would we accept it? I don't know. I wonder if now after three months of resting and being able to hear that voice again, I think I'd be able to hear it. I'm not sure that I would always be able to follow it. I want to share with you now a poem that really centered and um, anchored me in my time away. And it's a poem by Jim Richardson. And it's a blessing in the chaos. And it goes like this. To all that is chaotic in you, let there come silence. Let there be a calming of the clamoring, a stilling of the voices that have laid their claim on you, that have made their home in you, that go with you even to the holy places, but will not let you rest, will not let you hear your life with wholeness, or feel the grace that fashioned you. Let what distracts you cease. Let what divides you cease. Let there come an end to what diminishes and demeans, and let depart all that keeps you in its cage. Let there be an opening into the quiet that lies beneath the chaos, where you find the peace you did not think possible and see what shimmers within the storm. I wonder what's beneath the chaos in your life. I wonder if for Simon and Andrew, when they heard the invitation from Jesus to go and follow, they had a sense of clarity that cut through the chaos of their minds and their lives that allowed them to hear that voice, to reclaim themselves, to find the person that God had created them to be. And that this invitation was just an extension of this knowledge. And so as we reflect in a turbulent time, a time with so many unknowns, I wonder what would it look like for you in this very moment to drop everything and follow this Christ? Just think through what would you have to lay down? What would you lose? And what might you gain? I have to say in my three months away, I lost a lot of misconceptions and preconceived notions about who I was. I had an extreme experiment in humbling myself. And I gained a sense of stability and clarity along with health of who God is calling me to be. I think we lose our comfort. We lose the things that we've surrounded ourselves with that we believe are the answer and I think if we accept and hear that invitation from Christ to follow, to change our lives, to turn towards the way of Christ's movement, that action has both loss and, and gain. It's complicated. And so my challenge for you as we go out into this week is to think about what does space for silence look like for you? so that you might hear God's call, continuous call. You're never gonna miss the one call. It's an everyday thing for us. 
but what would it look like to, to actually carve out time for silence, to get beneath the layers of chaos, to reclaim the sense of self, to tune in with that voice, that voice that's not just your own constant list of groceries or your list of what's next in the day or those missed emails or those errands, not that voice. That one's a good one too, but let that one quiet and hear the voice of God within you. What would you lose and what would you gain by finding a space for that? In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray together. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have this day so graciously protected us, and we ask you to forgive us all our sins and the wrong which we have done, and by your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge concerning us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, friends, the Lord blesses and keeps you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you, and he is gracious unto you. The Lord looks upon you with every favor, and he gives you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good rest of your evening, friends. Um, rest well, and find that space for silence. Thank you.